this video, we're going to rescue this trash to treasure stool, transform this outdated cabinet into primitive decor, and repurpose this Dollar Tree styrofoam pumpkin into beautiful fall lighting. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Let's get started with the first project, which is a stool that I got for free and it was broken but I knew that I could fix it and make it a lot more sturdy so I brought it home and decided to take out all the screws now whoever tried to fix this used uh, all different kinds of screws and different heads on them you got straight blade and Phillips and just all kinds of craziness so once I got that all apart as far as I needed to I took the end off that was broken and added some uh, Gorilla Glue to both of the pieces and made sure that I had enough glue all over it so that it would stick really well. I wanted this to be nice and sturdy and it was in a really hard spot to be able to make sure that it would um, stay together. So I just used my clamps here and I left it overnight to dry so that it would be nice and uh, just stuck together really well. Now I'm gonna put it back together. This is the next day and I'm just gonna uh, add some glue to the end that's going to touch the inside of the stool. And then I'm also doing where it's gonna to touch on the top and more on the inside of the stool. Um, I did it on the leg and then on the inside brace part that goes across the middle. So now I'm going to, uh, I use some new screws and I'm going to add those to my little stool and make it a little bit more sturdy. Along with the glue and these longer screws, I think it will really sturdy this up very well. I'm gonna take a little bit of wood filler and fill in some of my screw holes just because they're just really deep. I don't mind this being uh, full of holes and scrapes and banged up, but I wanted to fill them in best as best I could. And um, once I did that, let it dry, I took it down and sprayed it all over with black. This is just an undercoating that um, when I distress back, I wanna be able to go back to the black on the stool. So now I'm taking some paint that I got from a company called DWIL. This is cardamom green. I love, love this green. And this goes on so well, dries fast, and it has a sealer in it. I'll have a link down in the description to this paint and also a discount code. It still works. So uh, you'll get a certain percentage off. I can't remember what it is. I think it's 20% or 30% and um, it's very nice paint. So I took a little brush and went in between the little slats to get the paint down in there because I couldn't with my big paint brush. And I'm just giving this whole stool two coats of this green paint. Then I'm gonna go back and distress the edges and bring back some of that black paint. And it also goes down to the wood, uh, the original wood color, which is fine, but I wanted mostly the black paint to come through. So once I got everything done on that, I even did the legs and up around the arches. I just hit all the edges where you normally would find wear and tear. I grabbed a transfer that I got. I think I got this from Dollar Tree a long time ago and probably back in the spring. And I wanted to add some, just some visual uh, things on the top of it. So I have this little uh, flower and some bees that I put, used and just rubbed it on there and then just added the bees all around it. And I think that looks really cute. Now from there, I decided that I would use a little bit more and I did this one with the bee and the little uh, half wreath around it. Uh, I put that up in the other corner and then I did another smaller flower down in the bottom corner just to give it some visual interest. Then I grabbed a piece of light sandpaper and gently sanded across the top of my uh, transfers just to give them a little bit of a distressing so it would match the rest of the stool. And then I decided that I wanted my uh, edges and everything to be a little bit more distressed. So I took some of my antique wax 
and just on a rag or a paper towel, I guess, and just wiped, uh, rubbed it, wiped it on and then rubbed it off. And I wanted most of it to come off and just leave some around the edges and down in the divots that were on the stool. My daughter picked up this really cool little cabinet for me for $7 at a thrift store and I thought it was so cute. I've done these before and I've used the wallpaper on the front to change out the picture which it definitely needs. So I think I'm just going to give this a paint job and uh, give it a nice base coat of black. It's not going to be black, but this base coat will make it so when I distress back, it'll go back to the black and not the white because uh, it will not go as well with my picture that I'll have on the front. So I took my Latte Dixie Belle paint and I am going to give this two coats all over once my black paint has dried. And I just love this paint. It's such a nice warm color and great for fall. It's great for all year long, but uh, where it is fall right now, this is a great color for my booth. I have this wallpaper with the saying family on it, so I thought that would go perfectly on the front. So I'm just trimming it down so that it would fit a little bit better and not overlap too much over the door and just make sure that it all will fit. So I just lay it down in and then crease it and then I'm going to trim it down so I know that when I get it wet and go to put it down, I'll have just a little bit of the wallpaper to trim. Once my paint is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and take some sandpaper and sand it down just lightly down to the black paint. And that's why I did the undercoating of the black. And there we go. See, it's just a light, just a light touching here, there, and everywhere on the edges and uh, the knob and things like that where it normally would be wear and tear. So I wet my family wallpaper that uh, it's pre-pasted so all I have to do is wet it activate the paste and I'm just laying it down and getting it centered into my frame here and then I'm going to take a paper towel and get try and get all the bubbles out and just make it all nice and flat and fit down in those creases really well. Because I trimmed it up with the scissors before I actually laid it down on here, I didn't have to trim off too much, but there was a little bit that I wanted to trim off. So I just used a razor blade and got those edges nice and sharp. I had a couple places where it did pull up the just the, the paper backing a little bit, so it took off the front of the picture, but I'm going to fix that with a little bit of antique wax. So I'm going to take some that I had watered down and on of this brush here and I'm just going to go over the edges of my picture, especially where, I'm going to do the whole cabinet, but especially where it ripped the little paper uh, on the wallpaper, I'm going to make sure I go over that so that it kind of covers it up and makes it look like it was meant to be there. So I just put it on there and then wipe it back. And I love how this gives it an antique vintage look. Uh, and it just makes the, it changes the color, but not so much that you can't tell it's that latte paint. Um, I just, I just really love how this, how the feel of it makes it so warm.
this is a styrofoam uh, pumpkin from Dollar Tree. It's a large size and you can get them in the just the styrofoam color, the white, uh, the black, or I think orange. So I just grabbed the black because I thought the color, if it came through, it would look fine with the colors that I'm using. So I'm going to make a vintage primitive um, pumpkin light and I'm taking my fusion mustard color and I'm going to do two coats all over this pumpkin. It doesn't have to have two coats, but I did like the full coverage that the paint gave and I didn't want to see a lot of the black coming through. So that's why the two coats. So once they were, or both of the coats were dry, I went back with my antique wax and now I'm giving it a coat of the wax. And then I'll just take a paper towel and I'm wiping it back and making sure to leave it down in each of the little crevices of the pumpkin so that it gives it that detail that I want. And I think this makes it look so old and vintage. I love when I use this mustard paint and the antique wax over the top. It just, I don't know, it just gives it such a cool look. And it's the perfect color for an aged pumpkin. So before I uh, went on to the next step, I wanted to use my hair, my hair dryer, my heat gun, to uh, just kind of dry it just a little bit. And I noticed that as I did that, it made little bubbles all over the styrofoam. And I liked that because it just gave it, it just added to the aged look. So I wanted to show you that if you put the heat gun on there a little, little too long, maybe it will bubble up. So I have this piece of lace that was in my stash and I wanted to tea, coffee diet. It's kind of a mixture of both in my jar. So I just took a, a uh, paintbrush and went over it to stain it just a little bit so that it would add to the vintage uh, look of it. So I just went around the edge of a hole that I made. I took the stem out and made a hole so that I could put a light down inside. So I just used my scissors for that. It was very easy. I'm going to glue this uh, material down on here. This was a doily that I had cut up, used for something else. So um, I'm just using the rest of it on this little pumpkin. So this is the light that I used. I used the bottom of it to measure out how big I wanted the hole in my pumpkin. And um, now I'm going to uh, just wrap this homespun black and tan material around it so that I don't have that stark white against everything else that I'm doing. And I think this looks really well with all the rest of the colors in the pumpkin. So this is a battery timer light and you can change the batteries and turn it on and off through the top where the uh, bulb is. So it makes it very easy to stick this right down inside of the pumpkin and you don't even have to pull it out to change it. Now, if you did have one, you'd wanna make it so the hole was just a little bit bigger so it would slide in and out a lot easier so that you could turn it on and off and change the batteries when you needed to. Uh, now I'm going to add the glue to the top of my doily and just add some Spanish moss around the base of my, my light here just to, again, add some dimension, some interest, and just give it more of that aged look. I took a few picks of these pit berries off um, a piece of garland that I had and I'm gonna take two of them and wrap them around my scissors to give them a little squiggly look. It makes them look fuller when you put them on something and you don't need as many when you use them uh, when you use them like this. So I like to do this this way when you're doing a small project. So I'm just wrapping them all, all the little uh, pit berry stems around my scissors and then I'm going to wrap them around the light and glue them on and this will just add another look to it. I also make a twine bow around the center of the uh, light, and I make a little tag that you'll see in the finished pictures.
I hope you enjoyed my projects today. I really enjoyed working on these. Let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite and which one it is. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And have a great day.